All right, Chia, you're in. What's up? Hi. Hi. Uh, so, questions kind of relating to a more like philosophical. You would still have uh, internal topic. states. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on one second. Experience. One second. Real quick. One sec. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Go for it. So, uh, I guess, what's your general stance on the I, on the big debate over killing versus letting die? Do you think like these are morally distinct concepts? Yeah, for sure. Are you familiar with James Rachel's baby in the bathtub thought experiment? Um, no, but you can go ahead and tell me. So the idea is there's two people, Smith and Jones. So uh, Smith, he wants to kill his baby cousin to get an inheritance. And so he does this by basically drowning his cousin in the bathtub. Mm -hmm. So now in the other case with Jones, he also wants to get an inheritance from his baby cousin. Uh, so he goes to the bathtub to drown him, but he sees that the baby is uh, already drowning. So he just decides not to do anything and to let the baby die right there. Okay. Uh, so in this case, the motives are the same, the stakes are the same, the outcomes are the same. Uh, what's really the moral dis difference in this? Um, this is kind of hard for me because I'm not, like, I don't really believe in, like, I'm not, like, deontological at all. And we're kind of talking about, like, the act itself. But I mean, like, I would argue that there is a significant difference between like the, the doing harm versus allowing harm. I, I think that there is a difference here, um, morally. Although, but I, 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 I guess, guess like, you, or, go ahead. Kind of point to where that comes from. Um, I, I mean, like, well, I mean, one is the act itself of murdering somebody, and the other one is the act of of watching somebody dying. I guess that you could intervene in otherwise. Right. But uh, I guess if it's like trivially easy to intervene and save the person, like. How is it like you're taking an action, right? By yeah, yeah. So like that. So what you're that saying is resulting in a death. Yeah. So what you're saying it being trivially easy to intervene and save somebody. Um, I think that that in and of itself could be a wrong. I just think it's a different type of wrong. So like for instance, let's say that I walk to a, a swimming pool and I see that somebody is like drowning, and I could just like, and it's in a three feet section, I could step in and save the person, right? I think that it would be morally wrong for me not to. If I if I were to believe in like a moral right or wrong, I would say like it's probably wrong for me not to step in and save this person. But if I don't, I don't think that's the same type of wrong as actually murdering the person, like actually pushing somebody into the pool and watching them drown. I, I guess what the is there a difference just beyond the cost of saving? Um, yeah, I mean, I would argue that one is like a really bad action and the other is kind of like a bad, like inaction, I guess. But, but I mean, I still would think these are two distinct different things. But I, I guess like kind of going down to your, uh, to your more like fundamental, uh, sources of ethics, right? I, my understanding is. You're sort of an egoist, but your mentality is that uh, if I take an action that is universally applied, will it benefit me? Uh, or is, is that sure? Yeah, I mean, I would argue that you should always save a person if you have the means to do so, and it's pretty easy, and it's like minimal risk. That like if somebody is like drowning in a bathtub or some shit, and you come and you see it, that you, you should definitely do something to to save that person. Yeah, for sure. So in, in like yeah. in that case, when I'm looking at, um, I'm sorry, I'm trying to work within the bounds of what you were saying, but for me personally, right? Like I think that if you walk into like a, a room and you see like a baby drowning in a bathtub versus like you drowning a baby in a bathtub, um, I would argue that these two things are, are pretty similar, are, are, are pretty similar. There, there is still like a distinction, but it's, it's almost trivial. Sure. But, but, to but like, it's, it's yeah. not like, a, do you think it's like meaningful for moral purposes? I mean, like, I, I think that if you believed in, like, in, in morality in terms of, like, if actions can be good or bad or right or wrong, I, I think there's a much more meaningful distinction. Um, but for me, that, that's, I guess, more kind of, like, consequentialistly oriented. I mean, like, I, I would argue that the, the, the difference is pretty trivial, I, I would say. Um, the, the, the only thing that I, that when I look for something, right, when I think of outcomes, the thing that I would look for is, like, predictor of future behavior. So, like, somebody that's willing to let somebody drown is probably not as big a harm on society as somebody that would literally go around drowning people for their own benefit, I guess, if that makes sense. Yeah, I, I guess the, the thing is, though, like, it, it's very hard to just gauge motive as an outsider, right? I, I think Impossible, the more yeah. useful thing, yeah, the more useful thing is to see what could the person have done and what could they have known in the situation and then what they did. And then I, I feel that gives towards their Well, like, so do you think that every right. person that, like, watches somebody drown is the same type of person that could also drown another person? depends on how easy it is to save the person who's drowning. So let's say like I was uh, kind of like 
by a swimming pool, right? And I didn't, I wasn't very confident in my swim, in my swimming abilities. I might hesitate to save somebody because I'm not completely sure. Well, yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah, but yeah. I'm not, 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 not talking uh, about that there's no risk to like the initial person, but like, let's say somebody's walking by and they see somebody drowning in a pool that with no risk to themselves, they could otherwise very easily intervene on behalf of and save. Do you think that a person that chooses not to do this is also has like a very high likelihood of going out to drown people? Uh, I guess like, I think they are pretty similar cases. Uh, I guess like, it, it seems the only reason why that person might not drown somebody is because like, it would be easier to get caught uh, drowning somebody or, or it like, they might perceive there's a greater punishment. But I, I think just like, really see a difference in the, in the cases. Right, like um, in the case that I, I mentioned with, where there's the baby in the bathtub, right? Uh, like, uh, I imagine, like, uh, you would still hold the person responsible for the death in either case. I, I wouldn't hold them, but not, not as, like, a murderer, I don't think. Maybe as somebody that should have done, like, a minimum level of, like, intervention. But no, I don't think I would hold that person accountable as a murderer. I think these are two pretty distinct things. But I, I guess, is it a meaningful, it, it, like, I feel like... Yeah, I do think it's meaningfully it's, distinct. Maybe okay. not, like, purely yeah. from, like, a like an outcome point of view. It's not meaningfully distinct. But in terms of, like, punishing, like, a... Well, well like, e even from, like, I think even from, like, a consequentialist or a deontological outcome, I, I think that it's, like, pretty different. Like, deontologically, if I was looking at the act itself, like, letting somebody die versus killing somebody, I think those are, like, just by virtue of both acts are, like, hugely distinctive um like and then from an outcome oriented view i don't believe that a person who is willing to let somebody drown is necessarily the same type of person who would drown somebody i i, I do think there's a lot of distinction between these two things even if like intention and everything line up well i mean it's kind of different if you say like in one outcome like a guy was like had the intention of going into the bathroom to drown a kid because then you're implying that like he would do it anyway and in that case it probably but i don't think for most people that allow harm to happen i don't think they're necessarily but, uh, capable of doing the harm go ahead I, I guess it just seems that, like, they said, like, motivation is really difficult to see. I, I get that, like, mm -hmm. from a practical perspective, it's difficult to implement a law that punishes uh, not acting, right? Uh, Incredibly I mean... difficult to prove that uh, they could have acted in a court of law or that, like, they had no other... Maybe. I don't right? know. But, but it... Do you, um... like, the distinction really boils down to whether possible actions you could have taken in the situation. Sure. Do you, um, I'm curious, what do you, Marty, do you want to take a stab at this? What's your thought on this? Can you hear me, guys? I can hear you now. You were muted before. Okay, I was just making sure I'm actually coming in through your entire conversation, so you'd have to recapitulate. Okay, um, never mind. Your mic is cutting in and out. <laughs> Hello? Hold on. Are you in your fucking car? What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> no, I'm not in my car. I'm outside. Oh my fucking god. So the question... It's a doing versus Tesla? allowing... Yeah, a do, a doing versus allowing harm. Do you think these are morally distinct, or do you think these are like one and the same? Yeah, they're of course distinct. They're distinct a lot. I mean, conceptually in terms of how you just assessed it. Wait, were they distinct I, I, how? Why would you say they're distinct? Well, one involves uh, one involves a sort of a mission, and the other one is a mission. Right? Wait, hold on. Do you have a microphone that doesn't sound like literal fucking AIDS in a tunnel, or your like voice is like super echoey? Yeah, give me give me ten seconds. Okay, you have ten seconds. Did you have another question, uh, Chia, or was this the main thing you wanted to talk about? Well, th there was another topic uh, I was kind of interested in discussing, and, and that has more to do with like rational self-interest and decision theory. Uh, would you like to kind of move to that topic, or, or do you want to continue exploring the, the ethics? Um, no, nah, fuck it. We'll stick to this for now, because that only sounds like a long conversation, too. And <laughs> I have to get through a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. So it, at least it, it seems to me that in both cases, you're still doing an action, right? It's just that in the case of letting somebody die there's more possible actions that could uh be different number of possible actions that could result in the person being saved versus if you are killing the person there's a different number of possible actions that could result in the person being saved does that make sense yeah i mean i kind of understand all right take it away marty you're the resident philosopher 
Uh, well, I mean, <laughs> okay, I'll try to take it away. No, I mean, but I, but I don't know if I would have said anything other than what you said earlier, Destiny, because I don't really disagree that there's at least a conceptual difference between admitting uh, a certain type of action in the situation of where, you know, like something's about to occur and you could stop it, but you choose not to, and then actively going about trying to, you know, destroy or kill people. Uh-huh. I don't see how a person could just like say that these aren't distinct. Now you could say like that they're similar in the sense that both are evoking a certain sense of responsibility and moral compulsion of the agent to do something. But that doesn't seem very controversial to me. I think uh, I'm not really sure why there would be a disagreement between you two. All right, head back to like, you. So uh, I guess it, it just doesn't seem like a very morally meaningful distinction, right? Because it's still resulting in a similar kind of outcome. And it's still, uh, it, it's clearly not a question of cost in a lot of these cases, right? Uh, so the idea I'm sort of going for here is like there are some positive obligations that are. Uh, yeah, but I don't think Destiny is going to disagree with that. I mean, are we, would he dis? I mean, you guys aren't disagreeing that there's. No, so like I would say, like, I agree that we probably, like, I think in society, if you see somebody that is, like, in trouble that you can help, I think you have some sort of social obligation to help that person. Assuming, obviously, that it doesn't come at great cost to yourself or whatever. I just think that there's a difference between not helping. Like, let's say I decide not to help them. I would say that's wrong, but I would say that's a different type of wrong than actually going out and murdering someone. That these are different types of wrongs, is what I would say. Oh, uh, sure. I, I guess the uh, reason why I, I was kind of interested in discussing this topic with you was uh, I, there was, a, I, I believe a few months ago, you had kind of a contentious argument with a lot of your followers. Uh, I think it had to do with some guy, a, a prominent Twitch streamer who had like a woman over at his hotel. And then the, the thing was like, she to hook up, but she decided not to. And then as a result, he canceled her, he kicked her out of the hotel and, and canceled her mm -hmm. uh, plane ticket arrangements. So kind of the points you made is that it doesn't seem like he had a clear moral obligation to uh, kind of uh, to, to either provide lodging or like a plane ticket to, to leave. Sure. Yeah. If it seems that like, you know, like a lack of action or like a, a negative action in this case can still cause harm and it can still be like a, well, a pretty so like, meaningfully uh, yeah act. i understand what you're getting at it seems like what our, what our problem is or miscommunication or whatever is like i do agree that so like allowing harm and doing harm are both bad i agree with that both of those are bad but just because both of those are bad i don't believe both of those are the same i think that's like the central thing that we're not or we're not seeing eye to eye on yeah it doesn't even seem like you guys are really disagreeing yeah. There's, of course, like content you have to assess in terms of like establishing whether this is good or bad, right? And that content is going to depend upon, you know, distinctions like the one that you just brought out. So it's like, as long as you universally agree that you have an ethical obligation in both the scenarios that you mentioned earlier between saving someone and then incidentally also not murdering someone, since these are both obviously ethical implications and certain things that one doesn't want to and doesn't and does want to do. I don't, I don't really see the disagreement. Uh, sure, sure. I, I guess as, I, I think we agree as long as like I guess like both uh, somebody and letting somebody die are like moral are not morally permissible. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I mean, I'd say both of them are bad. Both of these are not good things. They're bad things. I just don't think they're the same thing. Sure. Okay. Uh. I guess, is it okay if I talk about the other topic uh, in terms of, like, rational choices? Um, go for uh, it, yeah. So, I know, like, uh, a, a big part of your belief is that, uh, or, or a big part of uh, kind of your philosophy is that uh, you want to do stuff that sort of will rationally benefit yourself or, or will uh, kind of, like, further your own goals or uh, utility, right? Sure. So, the, how do you, how would you sort of deal with cases where uh, self interest your self interest is really conditional on other people's actions? Can you give an example of that? Oh sure. Uh, are you familiar with the prisoner's dilemma yes. problem in? Okay. 
Uh, so what's sort of your stance on the on the rational choice? Um, the problem is like prisoner's dilemma, like doesn't really play out as simply as it does in the thought experiment in real life. But I mean, like in right. real life, you have kind of like, are you familiar with the concept of like tit for tat? Yeah. I'm sorry, what'd you say? Hello? Hello? Oh, yeah. Here with the... Wait, I'm sorry, your mic keeps cutting out. Are you close enough for use push to talk? Okay, are you, oh, so I'll ask one more time, are you familiar with the concept of tit for tat? Uh, yes, I am. Okay, yeah. So like, I mean, like in real life, I mean, like I would probably initially cooperate with somebody assuming that I thought they were going to cooperate with me, but if it seems like that's not the case, then I wouldn't, then I'd say fuck it, right? So like a real life example of this might be like, um, like in like business dealings or when I associate with people, like I usually try to give people the benefit of the doubt and act like as, as reasonable as I can. Um, but if I think that everybody's fucking everybody, then I'll fuck everybody too. So like, that's why I'm like part of collab DRM, for instance, like I claim random shit on YouTube if I can get money off of it, because people do the same fucking shit to me and there's no reason for me not to. So, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, so I, uh, there is that like, if everybody else followed a similar strategy, then it would generally lead to cooperation. Uh, and if they don't, then you can at least, like, cut your losses. Sure, yeah. Uh, th thoughts on the uh, on the Newcombs paradox, or if you're familiar with that? No idea what that is. The idea with that is there are two boxes that uh, are presented in front of you. So one of them is guaranteed to contain $1,000. And then the other, it may either contain nothing or it may contain a million dollars. Okay. The contents of the second box, they have been decided by this predictor who's standing in front of you, who can predict human behavior with some, let's just say like a 99% accuracy. Mm -hmm. Right? So the predictor has said, and he's already filled the boxes, but he said that you have the choice between choosing both boxes or just the second box. Just the second box, you'll put $1 million inside of it. And if you pick both boxes, you'll put nothing inside of it. The issue here is that uh, there, there's two ways to look at the problem in terms of what the rational decision is. Uh, so since the box has already been filled, you would think thinking, picking both boxes would strictly be better than just picking the second box, because no matter what the second box has inside of it, boxes are always going to have more than that amount, right? Uh, but then the question is, since the predictor is incredibly accurate with his uh, predictions, if you were to pick both boxes, chances are the second box would have nothing inside of it. Whereas if you were to only pick the second box, chances are it would have a million dollars inside of it. Okay. I don't, I, I, I don't know what the correct answer is. I don't have to think about this for a long time, but I'm sure there's like already written solutions to this, no? Or it's been written that there are no solutions? Well, I, I guess it, it's sort of, it, it's still considered like a paradox in game theory, I think. Or it's still like hotly debated. Oh, well then, I, I mean, I probably don't have anything useful to add to it. Okay. I, I guess, like, kind of what I was getting at there is, like, when you usually try to decide what's in your self-interest, more, like, how do you sort of uh, gauge the, uh, the, like, how the variables uh, are going to be with any given choice you make, uh, especially if they're highly conditional on other people's actions? Uh, can you give me, like, a real-world example of this, or...? Uh, well, I guess, like, hmm, I, I, I guess that paradox, uh, I'm, I'm not, I can't think of any clear real-world examples right now, but the, the prisoner's dilemma, like, does have a lot of uh, big ones, but you, you already answered that. Yeah, in the prisoner's dilemma, you'd practice tit-for-tat systems, basically. So, ideally, yeah. you would cooperate with somebody until they fuck you over, and then you would either cooperate a little bit more and see if they fuck you over again, or you would just go to fucking them over, so you'd fuck each other over. All right. Well, uh, I guess we, we kind of covered some of the topics I was pretty interested in. Uh, keep your time. Okay, uh, cool. All right. Well, hey, thanks a lot. I appreciate the conversations, buddy. Yeah, thanks. Have a nice okay. one. Yep. See you later.